The Prophet wasallam said there was a person from the past who killed 99 people. It was like nothing to him. But subhanAllah, after 99 bodies, this man felt bad. This man wanted to start a new page apologizing and repenting to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So he started to ask around. Maybe the people did not know that he was someone who killed that many people. So he asked him, where is the shaykh? Tell me, is there an alim around? I want to ask him a question. I want the most educated person on earth. Because he knew his sin was so big. I need someone who's so knowledgeable to help me in my situation. So he said, yeah, uh, you can go to this one individual. He will be able to help you. You know who they directed him to? It was a devout worshiper, like a monk, someone who's like always in the masjid. Not an alim, but just worships Allah very much. And that's the mistake many people in the public, they do. They confuse the, the person who is always in the masjid as someone who's a scholar and an alim. Someone with a beard can answer all the questions. Be careful, may Allah protect us. So they told him, go to that person. Yes, he's the alim. So when he went to him, he said, brother, I have killed 99 people. Is there any way for me to repent? Would Allah ever forgive me? Will Allah's mercy ever embrace me entirely? So the devout worshiper said, after killing 99 people, like you're thinking you have a chance? No, la. So the person, when he heard this, he pulled his sword. What? He pulled his sword and he struck him and he killed him, making it 100 souls that he killed alone. Allahu Akbar. However, he felt the urge to repent. So he started to ask around, give me a alim. Tell me the address of someone that can answer my question. I want someone who is the most educated person fil ard on earth. So he said, go to that person. This time, it was a true alim. This time, he went to him and he told him, Shaykh, I have killed 100 souls. Is there any way Allah would forgive me? I have committed such a crime. Is there any way I can start a new page? I want to clear my record. Look what the alim said, the scholar, the one who knows Allah very well. He says, what are you talking about? There is nothing nothing that can come between you and the repentance and the mercy of Allah, Allahu Akbar. Nothing can stop you. You and I, all you who's watching, all you who's talking, all you who's around, there's no sin we can commit that is bigger than the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala whatsoever, Allahu Akbar. So the alim tells him, listen, but there is, I want to advise you with something. The alim, by the way, the question he was asked was a yes or no. But the alim saw the situation and he answered more than, yes, Allah can forgive you. He seized the moment, he gave him nasiha. He says, listen, I want you to move. I suggest and encourage you to move to such and such village. Why? What's so special about that village? There are people who worship Allah, people of knowledge, great society, righteous group of people. Go to them and worship Allah with them. And do not return back to your land. Why? What's wrong with my land? Your land is very corrupted. The people are very wicked and evil. So head towards that village and there repent to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and worship with the righteous. Ready? Yalla bismillah. The brother left that city that he was living in. He traveled, he traveled, he traveled. Halfway between the two villages, he died. Allahu Akbar. What are the chances? Qaddar Allahu wa ma sha'a fa'al. It is Allah's will, Allah's wisdom behind it. So when he died, something interesting happened, something abnormal. What happened? Two groups of angels came down to the same soul, the angels of punishment and the angels of mercy. They start to argue, oh, we're supposed to take his soul. Why are you here? Well, I'm supposed to take his soul. What do you mean? The angels of punishment said, he did not do anything good in his life. The angels of mercy said, but he was coming sincerely to Allah to repent. Allahu Akbar, they were arguing, who will take the soul of this man? Then Allah sent an angel in the shape of a man to judge between the two groups of angels who will take his soul. Ready for the judgment? Bismillah. He said, calculate the distance from where that person died to the village that he used to live in and calculate the distance from his body to the village that he was going to. Whatever he's closer to, take him. So let me test you. If he was closer to the village of the righteous, who will take him? Yes, I think you got it right. The angels of mercy. If he's closer to the village of the wicked and the evil, the angels of punishment will take him. Yalla bismillah. Before the measurement took place, Allah did something to the geography of earth. Allah did something to the topography of this earth. I learned it recently. So if you don't know the word, Google it. Topography, all right? Allah changed the whole earth. Why? Allah made 
and told the city of the righteous, get closer to the man. What? Yes, Allah shrunk the land and earth and made that city of the righteous get closer to the man. Then Allah commanded the land of the wicked to go further away from the man. So when the angels came to measure, he was closer to the city of the righteous, Shibr, this much, a few inches. That's all what it took for him to be closer to the people of the righteous. Then the angels of mercy took him, and Allah forgave all his sins. Now hold on, hold on. You may be thinking, and maybe shaitan may come and say, how is that fair? He killed 100 people. Let Allah the all-wise judge. Allah will take care of them. But you and I remember one thing, a lot of things to remember, but one thing, no sin is bigger than Allah's mercy. Assalamu alaikum.